High Christian Family Centre churches. It's that time of the year where the board of Christian Family Centre churches produce and accept the audited financial statements covering all of our financial affairs. It is here. Your lead pastors have made it available for you. And uh, like is our practice, our auditors are not part of the Christian Family Centre for total transparency and accountability. And every cent that comes in from all of our churches is accounted for. And so we send this to you if you are a financial contributor. It's a public document that you can peruse and see. You may be more focused on your local church, but take a look at the big picture of what's taking place right across our churches from, from uh, Darwin all the way through to, to Hobart, Alice Springs, Hills, uh, Barossa Valley, uh, South, Lefevre, and, and here at, at uh, the Christian Family Centre at Seaton. And so if you have any questions about these audited financial statements, please talk to your lead pastor, or you may want to email Milan Tompich, our general manager, who oversees uh, the financial affairs of uh, our Christian Family Centre churches, the big picture, and, uh, and we'll endeavour to answer any of your questions. Or if we can't answer them, then certainly the auditors will. Look, thank you for your amazing generosity over a period of time, the last two years with COVID, that has knocked churches around for a six. Thankfully, Christian Family Centre churches, their financial affairs have really been sound, which speaks of your commitment and loyalty to continue giving and supporting, even though attendances have been a little bit lower. So thank you for giving, particularly online, which is such a, a wonderful way by which we can make sure that we are giving on a regular basis, our tithes, our monthly mission offerings, our building support uh, offerings. So thank you, uh, every one of you, for your faithfulness in, in your giving. And your own lead pastors will be sharing today just a positive report on how you are actually doing and, and particularly your own local goals. The second thing is uh, we're sending you the list of the Christian Family Centre Board of Directors and our advisory council, that is the accountability body that the board uh, relates to. And so uh, please uh, pray for us, for myself as, as board chairman and in my role as senior minister of, of uh, Christian Family Centre churches, as well as being the lead pastor here at Seaton, different roles. But uh, we have uh, fantastic men and women on our board. One of them, David Hersey, who has been serving with us for 37 years, he's the oldest member, uh, David has decided, and I have reluctantly accepted, that he's stepping down from the board. And uh, I'm pleased to announce that Dan Potter from our Hills Church, uh, he's part of the Hills leadership team. I've got to know Dan really well over the years, and uh, he has accepted our invitation to join the board of directors. He's been uh, on an observer status for 18 months. We love him. He is a wonderful man of God, fantastic wife in Jessica, terrific kids, great reputation, brings a skill set that's, gonna, that's already added to the board. And so uh, these are uh, your board of directors. You don't know them all, uh, and uh, um, it's almost impossible for you to get to know them all because you, you have to relate to your lead pastor and the local leadership team that he or she puts together. But it's a bit like our Prime Minister and Cabinet. You know, we don't know them personally, but we trust them because they're accountable. And so this board is fully accountable to our Advisory Council. And also we work within our denominational family, CRC Church International. We're accountable to our national executive team. And so we, we work with uh, uh, the highest levels of integrity and great probity. And each member of the board is a person of, of tremendous, not just capability, but character. And so I welcome Dan Potter officially to the team and ask you to pray for our, our board of directors constantly as we meet every six weeks or so. Uh, we get a report from each of our churches and also pray for our advisory council who receive all the minutes of our board meetings and any advice that we need we get from them. So look, have a great day and uh, may you rejoice with what God is doing in your local church to reach your local community and thank you for supporting your lead pastor, the leadership team and for, your, for the faithfulness of your generosity and giving over the past 12 months. God bless you. Good morning everyone.
That was me as senior minister and chairman of the board. Now it's me as lead pastor of Seton to give you a, uh, a report. Uh, I've been traveling a bit over the past little while. I've been to Darwin and Alice. Oh, the weather was beautiful. And uh, then came back, uh, had wonderful time. Then came back and uh, went to Sydney for two days this week to uh, chair the Australian Pentecostal Ministers Fellowship, which I've been doing for the past three years, which is the heads of all the Pentecostal movements get together for 24 hours. We had a great time and uh, representing probably the heads that were there, probably representing 17, 1800 churches across Australia. So it was great, but it's good to be back and to be in fellowship together. Love Patrick's leading, love the African style. Isn't that good? Um, so let me give you a brief report um, about how we're doing here. Firstly, uh, I wanna commend our accounts team uh, Milan Tompich is our finance director, Emma Lumberg's our accountant, Lorraine Hardwick and May Kirkland assist uh, in the accounts office. It, you know, we, we tend to see what happens here on a Sunday, great music and, you know, reasonable preaching and, um, you know, fellowship sharing, small groups and, and that, but behind the scenes, this department oversees every cent that is given to, at the Christian Family Centre here at Seaton and also right across our churches, they oversee all the accounts. And, um, and so uh, I commend them. Emma and Lorraine are part of our Lefevre Church because we are a multi-site church, one governance body and uh, many different locations. Uh, they're a great team, so uh, commend them when you see them. Hey look, our weekly tithes income here at Seaton, uh, you see the average in 2019, 2020, 2021, uh, you know, 14, 9, 15, 8, 15, 6. And then for this year, and I've already addressed this with you in letters and we've talked that we've seen a drop take place probably from uh, November, December through to uh, probably uh, April as such. Attendances have dropped down and this has been a common feature right across Australia and attendances and, and finances in many respects have also dropped because of that. As, as a result of COVID. And uh, so we're trusting that our attendances will come back up. Uh, so we found in April, sorry, in May, that our tires went up $2,000 a week, which is great, that doesn't show it here, but we're probably about $2,000 short a week according to our budget. So I just wanna encourage you, if this is your spiritual home and uh, you love Jesus, you love his church, then I encourage you to become a financial supporter. If you are already tithing, God bless you. If you wanna consider that, I've produced a little booklet uh, called Christian Stewardship that explains and, uh, about it. So I would encourage you. And for those who uh, have, are not attending, um, we trust that they will re-engage and also be involved in financially supporting the church. So we're, we're trusting God that this is gonna be uh, going to increase, you know, June, July, August, that we'll get back to normal, which is great. So we're not panicking as such because we're really cutting back everything that we can, all except our staffing. The last thing we want to do is, is to cut back. We've got, I think, 17 staff or so from one day a week through to or half a day a week to one day, two, three, four, full time. So that's the last thing we'd want to do for that. So um, that's our weekly ties out. Our total giving as a local church last year is about 19,000, just over $19,000 per week that comes in, which is a significant amount of finance and, and our council department handles that. Our value as a church here at Seaton, this is not including Hobart or Alice Springs, um, you'll see we're valued at around $27.5 million. So we have a significant asset and uh, that is going up in, in value. And for those of us who've been around since uh, the beginning to see what God has done, just purely in material terms is fantastic. But for those of you that are young, it's our gift to you. So the oldies who paid for all this, we're giving it to you, it's not ours. It belongs to Jesus and you've got to become the stewards. That's why in our board of directors, we're looking at making changes and bringing younger leaders on uh, right across the board. Like David Hersey's 37 years, uh, George Wabnitz was here at 8.30 and George was the first one that came off the board and I reluctantly said for George, and uh, so he's 76 as well and, and uh, so some of us who are in our 60s and, and early 70s, uh, we're transitioning to men and women in their 30s and 40s so they can carry the responsibility of all the Christian Family Centre churches 
uh, for the next 20 years as such. So keep them in your prayers, it's really important. Hey, uh, so that's a good news story, our value is fantastic. Hey, just a little one that particularly, Milan's not here today, but this is his little baby. He decided to get solar panels, got government assistance and put them up in 2014 or something. Uh, the cost of our power over everything was $46,000. It's down now to $15,000, isn't that great? And, uh, and he wants to go neutral. So we'll get a whole pile of batteries one day. Once the technology is fully there, they're a bit expensive, so then we can s store the electricity and use it and be nil. Wouldn't that be great? We're more green than the greens. Uh, I've got to be careful what I say, don't I? Okay. Um, so uh, our loan repayment summary, uh, uh, our, our equity is $27.5 million. We did have a, a loan, uh, loans of around $503,000 2019. We've been able to reduce that down to uh, $232,000 in uh, uh, December, or actually right through to, to now. So uh, totally, total repayments have been about $271,000, which is actually a good thing, you know, just to get rid of debt, and particularly with interest rates going up a bit higher. So that, that's been good. Our perpetuity funds, we started a couple of years ago. Um, these are funds that are kept in perpetuity where people place, put the church in their will and put a certain amount of their estate in, into the church. And so far it's nearly $50,000. I think it's gone up another 3,000. We've had people that have gone to be with the Lord and they've put the church in their will. That's being worked through with lawyers and, and their, their families. Uh, and I would encourage you, Kathy and I have done that. I have four kids and nine grandkids. And uh, when we go and be with the Lord, they're gonna be really well off but they're praying that we'll live to 119 years of age. But I've also put the church in, so a fifth of our state goes to the church. And, uh, and so we, um, uh, that is not to be used, so the perpetuity fund is those funds stay there and the interest only can be used for mission purposes and ministry purposes. For example, I got a letter this week that Sri Lanka's in a mess, absolute mess. Their government is one of the most corrupt in the world. The president's gone, the prime, I think the prime minister's gone, government's turning over, riots in the streets, they've run out of petrol, they're running out of food, and, uh, and so we've raised $10,000 for refugees in, in, in um, Ukraine. Wouldn't it be good if we had, say, $10 million put aside in this perpetuity fund that we could safely say, cut a check of $50,000, say, here, Pastor Som, use this for petrol and food and stuff. We can't do that. So we're looking at, this would be a wonderful way by which we can help the poor and the needy and, and mission. So, so keep that in mind. If you're doing your will, don't forget Jesus. Remember, we believe in the communion of the saints. Nobody dies. They just shift from earth to heaven. So they still have a vote, okay? So when I'm in heaven, I'll still have a vote. Well, sort of. Well, my finances will still be used for, for uh, extending the kingdom. So uh, keep that in mind, church. And, if, and uh, the important thing is you need to uh, make sure you, you care for your family and uh, work it through with your family. No surprises. And also with a lawyer. I think that's important when you're doing your will. Hey, Christian Family Centre Churches, we have a fund that uh, out of every $100 that comes in, $10 is put aside. 3% goes to our denominational family. And as a lot of you are aware, I head our denominational family. So for example, my expenses to go to Sydney and back, that was all covered for by the movement. Uh, I go to the World Pentecostal Conference in October, the movement covers that. So it covers the national chairman, not a salary, but expenses. It covers our travel costs uh, for our national executive and other portfolios. So we put 3% of our income, the CRC movement, um, uh, 140 plus churches into our movement that covers our national and state uh, expenses. But we also put 7% aside, all of our Christian Family Centre churches, into what we call the, the, the CFC Churches Fund. And this helps fund and plant churches. So, for example, my trip to Darwin and Alice, that was, came out of that fund. The support of the pastor in Alice Springs, Pastor Allen, is two days a week, we support him. Uh, the church we planted down south with Pastor Tim and Nikki, we covered all the costs of the setup, all except Tim's salary. We just kept him on salary uh, as uh, the family centre until here at Seton, until we actually, they became self-sufficient. So we're able to, to plant churches. We're thinking of planting a church and planning in our thinking and prayer to plant another church by the end of 2023 in the greater Adelaide area. Um, so, uh, but, so the funds for that, we put that aside. All our churches do that.
Our world mission support over the page. Uh, we gave $117,000 last year. All our family centre churches about $184,000. Um, our current giving is around $33,000 so far to the end of April. Then Alice Springs facility. Uh, I'll get, make these, these slides available to everyone. You can have a closer look at them. I'll send them out during the week. Our Alice Springs facility, our Alice Springs church bought a property, fantastic property for about half a million dollars and they're covering the cost of that. But to put up the church building, the facility is just houses midweek meetings. All of us together, Christian Family Centre churches and others outside the Christian Family Centre have been contributing. We've raised $292,000. Uh, Seaton here, about $110,000. Thank you for your generosity, church, on that one. Northern Territory Government has put in $100,000 as well. And, uh, and you see, uh, so far, just under $300,000 has been raised. And we have about $100,000 that we can use to finish off the existing building. And Pastor Allen and uh, uh, Milan and Cobus, our architect, are looking at finishing that off this year. That's a, that's a good news story. CFC Church's cash and building funds, hey, we're pretty solvent. Um, you see the cash that's, that's there in, in the facilities. We've got about $1.1 million that's there. And you'll notice um, uh, Lefevre and uh, um, Hills have got 400 plus thousand, 330,000. That's their building fund. So they're, they're saving to help the day when they will buy. And I've said to them, I said, guys, that's nowhere near enough. If you're gonna put a, buy land and put a building up in, in those places, you need about $2 million. So keep saving and keep developing stewardship campaigns. So that's um, the total cash in the Christian Family Centre. Uh, hear the sound, see the vision, facility upgrade. Hey, look, over the past three years, again, the church here, you've been magnificent. If you're online, you're magnificent if you've been giving towards this. We've raised uh, just under $400,000, um, and uh, which is fantastic to cover all, all these costs. And uh, the costs to date have been $273,000, plus we've been able to reduce debt as part of that stewardship campaign of $100,000. We're almost there. The facilities upgrade is almost completed. The campaign finishes at the end of June, which is this month. We're not quite there. If you look at the final slide, is we've got the two speakers. I can't believe the speakers came in and I was away. I didn't enjoy them. You've been enjoying them. And so there's just not noise now. You can actually hear the sound of the voices and each instrument playing. And, but it's not completed. We need a middle blank. And these ones, they all need to go back a metre. There'll be some engineering work. The middle blank will be a smaller group. And so we took up a special offering uh, in the end of April for $60,000, we've raised 45,800, and that's the next slide, guys. Facilities upgrade. So we've raised 45,000, and uh, we add the third speaker. The cash available is 30, and uh, uh, total cost. So the cash that's needed is about $17,000. We're about 17, nearly $18,000 short. And so what I'm saying is, uh, for those of you that have been giving towards the campaign over three years, if you want to finish at the end of June, that is fine. Kathy and I are going to continue probably through to August, sorry, through to October, because we've worked out it's about $4,000 a month comes in towards that. So if you would consider that, if you have made a contribution just to continue to the end of October, we'll be able to have it all completed by our national CRC conference in the uh, first week of October. So that's a good news story. Let me pray, blessing on our church and all our churches. Father, thank you for uh, Milan and his team for the accounting procedures and the care that they, they in looking after all these practical areas. And we pray, Lord, for all of our churches as the lead pastors are giving their reports today, bless them. Lord, as each of them have a good news story, including ourselves, I pray that you would provide for all of our needs. And Father, the need of, of seeing our tithes go up in the next few months, we commit it to you. We trust you're gonna work through your people. And I thank you for the generosity of your, of your amazing people here at Seton in giving to missions and giving to facilities and giving their tithes. Lord, just may, may uh, you enrich them in every way that they're part of a team that's doing something great here in South Australia and throughout the world. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.